Hey, Justin Chamnus here, and welcome to another episode of the Lease Option live stream. I'm your host, and I'm going to talk to you today about why it feels so sketchy sometimes when you get on the phone with a homeowner to talk about doing this wholesaling business. It feels pretty sketch sometimes, or it can. It has for me. Now, maybe you don't relate. You know, and I was talking to a guy earlier this week who said that he doesn't relate that he's never felt sketch. Well, you know what? I have felt that sketchy feeling when starting to do this. Now, I've I found the cure, and I'm going to give it to you today. But let me show you, um, while we talk here today, how to defeat that sketch feeling. Because it's a problem that originates and ends right here. Okay? We're going to jump into that. Why does it feel sketch? Well, first of all, it is a self-sabotage thing. It's a self-sabotage thing. That's right. You are sabotaging yourself. And only you can fix this. But it also originates more than just from more than just your self-sabotaging. It is that you don't see yourself as the buyer. Now, in order to do a real estate wholesale transaction, whether ugly house or pretty house, it does not matter. You've got to see yourself as the buyer because you are the buyer. Let me explain. On the contract that you put together with the homeowner, you have to have a buyer. And that buyer will be your name or it will be a wholesale company name that you've come up with, okay? But like an LLC, for example, a lot of folks are doing deals and ho wholesale deals and LLCs, or it could be your name. It doesn't matter. But on the agreement, there has to be a buyer. And that's as, a, as an investor wholesaler, that's you, okay? So the problem becomes, I think when we start in this business, Talking to homeowners, we feel sketch sometimes because we don't see ourselves as a buyer. And the reason why we don't see ourselves as a buyer, I think, is because we don't fully understand the the strategies that are that we could employ as a real estate investor professional. But I think it also originates from the fact that we realize that, hey, I don't have the money. <laughs> Right? Like, I just don't have the money. Like, I've been talking to homeowners. Good to see you, uh, Angel. Good to see you. Andre is here in the room. I missed him so bad last week. I'm so man, bad. I, I missed you guys, too. I, I got caught up on a couple of calls, man. But you, you're talking my language here with the uh, contracts. I like that. Let, let's uh, let's continue that. Thanks, dude. Thank you. Yeah, I as a wholesaler, we got to put our name down as a buyer. And at first, when I was getting started in this business, I did not feel like a buyer. I did not feel like a buyer at all. And the reason why was because I had a little bit of poverty mentality. Is that is it okay to admit a little poverty mentality? Like, oh, well, you know, I don't have the money. I've never done this before. I'm, I've never really been successful. I've never been rich. I don't, I'm not... I feel like I'm posing as someone I'm not when I'm talking to this seller. I'm, and that gives me this sketch feeling. <laughs> I don't know if anybody right. uh, out there listening uh, has ever had that sketch feeling, but I've had it. And I've had students come to me and say, you know, hey, this feels kind of, I wouldn't say it's a scam. It just feels sketch to me. Why? When I started doing the phone calls, it started feeling scammy and sketch to me. Well, I believe it's because we don't see ourselves as the buyer. We, because we got this poverty mentality a little bit, but also because we don't understand really some of the strategies we could employ. So here's the thing. What's the first, what's the best strategy that every real estate investor wishes he could get? Like with the homeowner, what, what's the, if you're going to, let's choose strategies. Okay. Like strategies, meaning lease options, uh, wraparound, subject to contract for deed, maybe a, a subject to with a seller carryback hybrid. Uh, 
maybe something else, discount cash offer. What What's the king strategy that reigns supreme over them all? That's not, <laughs> was that dramatic <laughs> enough? Yeah, that's what's, pretty dramatic. Yeah. What's the What's the king strategy? Which one? It's got to be discount, right? It 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 is got to be discount cash offer, right? The discount cash offer, exactly what what Andre said. And why do you say that, Andre? I mean, because it, it's clean. It's the ideal scenario. It gets rid of the poverty mentality that you were just talking about. Hey, you know, I'm buying this thing at a discount. I, you know, I'm going to be able to sell my interest in it. And, you know, I'm getting it at such a good deal. It's just not going to cost me much money. Yeah. It's, it's the king. You know, the realtors have a saying, cash is king. Right, right, right. Yeah. That, and it's tied I guess directly I'll, to the king. Yeah. <laughs> Other people have that same saying. I don't. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, um, discount cash offer is the king strategy because all of us can do it. Right. Even well, if you're those, with the, those with the king, those with the cash. Well, yeah. And let's talk about that for a second, Andre, because I personally don't have the cash from getting started. I, I was broke, completely broke. I was less than broke. You know, uh, which I was in, I was in a hole. Like, <laughs> right. So if, if being debt free is standing on the ground and debt is negative, then I was getting buried. Yeah. Uh, it was rough and had no way of really coming out of that except this real estate dream. So the King strategy cash discount put me in a driver's seat. Even with bad credit, no money, all of that. Why is that? Because there are money men out there. Right. Money men, like like Andre. By the way, Andre's contact information is in the, the description of this video, as well as Angel's. But check out what, what money man it means to me. Like, if I find a deal, 50 cents on the dollar, it needs repairs. All of that taken into account. I don't care if my credit's pretty bad. I don't care if my pocketbook is empty, really. There's probably some money man out there that's got a way to get some money into the scenario because there's less risk in it for them. Is, is that true, Andre? Uh, very true. Anytime that you can get it, at a discount to what the market value is, you're going to find local hard money guys. You're going to find private money guys like me that are willing to lend on it. it uh, you, you'll find your grandmother, your uncle with their 401k. Everybody's going to see that scenario as something of value and want to be a participant in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. That's been my experience. You know what they say, if you get a great deal, a discount, what we're talking about is the, the king strategy, the discount cash deal. It doesn't matter who you are. Be broke, be be right out of prison. You, you know what I mean? With, with nowhere to live and no money, but got a great discount cash deal, you got friends with money now. Right. <laughs> it, it's really interesting how that works. And that's why the discount cash strategy makes you a buyer i mean legitimately a legitimate buyer that's a exactly legitimate right. buyer as a wholesaler yes because now you realize that if you can contract this 50 cent on a dollar deal it opens up a world of opportunities not only for the homeowner to sell but for you to buy or a sign that's true it's true. So true. So, so what's the cleanest way, Justin? Is it the, um, for a guy like that? You know, let's say he's fresh out, doesn't have a place to stay. He's trying to structure a deal. Should he set the deal up immediately as an assignment, or should he go out there, put it under contract, and then try to wholesale it 
with another closing to someone else. What in your experience, what what have you seen has been the best way to get get off the ground and get started? Okay, I feel like an assignment is the easiest way to pass this opportunity on to someone else for quick money. That's right. wholesaling. Um, double closing, that's also wholesaling, just a little bit slightly more complicated. It requires a relationship. You got to have a relationship to pull that one off, right? You got to have a good title company. Yeah. And you've got to have somebody that will do what's called a, 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 a maybe a bridge loan if, if it's a long term thing. If it's transactional, a, yeah. If transactional it's a short, ending. short like yep. day thing, it's it's a transaction loan. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if it's two weeks, it's a bridge loan or something. You know, if it's a few days right. to two weeks or something, but trans. So you've got to have that. But again, if you're in a state where you need to double close, having a great discount cash offer means that there are dudes and dudettes out there. With the money willing, oh my goodness, would I love to put down $85,000, $125,000 for an afternoon? I'm a wire it to a wire comp, I mean, to a title company or a closing attorney. And in, in return, he's going to wire it right back to me right. with an additional two or 3%, depending on how deep I'm getting the guy. In a day? How many? How many days can we do this? Right. That's the question that comes up. How many days can we do this? Yeah, yeah you, it's a great deal for the guy that's the, the money man here. So, um, again, it, you can be anybody. And if you find a great discount cash deal, now you are suddenly somebody. So that's that's pretty powerful, I think. So, first of all, you might have that sketch feeling, but realizing that you have the power to pull the trigger on a discount cash offer. That's pretty awesome. Well, you might say, I don't have any of those money men. Well, you don't have the deal yet, but right. you get the deal and you start talking the deal and there'll be money men. Hey, I've got money. I could help you. Hey, have you ever thought about fixing and flipping yourself? Ooh, I don't know about that. That's a toughie. You know, Justin, so I think another reason for feeling sketch is because there's, you know, probably not seeing the other side of it on why somebody wants to sell it at a discount. And there's there are legitimate reasons why somebody would want to sell it at a discount. I mean, somebody could have passed away. You could be going through some health issues. And, you know, yeah, obviously the world is a lot flatter now and everybody can kind of see you know, what the price is. But, you know, if I'm on my deathbed, if my mom passed away and I'm working my job in, you know, Alaska and I've got a property in Phoenix that I just inherited and, you know, I I just really want to get rid of it and get some cash out of it or pay off what's owed, uh, you know, and just kind of get rid of the headache. Those are legitimate reasons. And you're providing an avenue for that person to get rid of their problem. And so, yeah, you're getting at a discount and you're thinking to yourself, you know, man, this guy's selling me this house that's worth 200,000 for 120,000. Why doesn't he just, well, because, you know, you don't understand what the problems are that he's Mm -hmm. having and Mm -hmm. you're helping him with that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You're problem solvers, really. We are a society of convenience. In every, in every way, shape or form, you know, we are, we want to go to Walmart because we only, which I don't, but people want to go to Walmart so they can get everything all at once. Mm -hmm. Uh, People will pay more at a convenience store so they don't have to go to Walmart. Right. People pay DoorDash because they don't want to get up and go outside to get their own food. Right. Um, we are a society of convenience. And when it comes to a home that there's a huge convenience factor in there. So I don't want to fix it. I can't fix it. I can't afford to fix it. Um, I just don't want to deal with it. I can't like, I can't go 
across the United States too right. with this house. So it's it's a matter of convenience. So when I think about it, I think about it as I'm offering a service of convenience and you're trading money for convenience. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. all do. We all pay more for convenience. So I equate it to that when I'm talking to people. Oh, yeah. Like going to the convenience store and, you know, or allowing somebody else to clean your house or whatever it is that's convenient for you, you're trading convenience for a little bit of cash mm -hmm. um, in, in what we do. Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah, I agree. Just the way the world is. I agree. And so, so they're definitely for somebody to sell at 50% or, or 50 cents on the dollar or whatever, whatever it equates to after repairs and all of that, you know, the wholesaler formula, you know, right. Um, after that, you know, uh, there's got to be some reason why they want, the, or need the convenience and and the and the cash offer <laughs> because and you got to think you know realtors don't like that stuff a lot because they don't they can't get loans you know like normal conventional <clears throat> home home loan you know mortgages where people can move into these because they need massive repairs so uh, unless a, a realtor is involved in working with investors and fix and flippers and wholesalers and stuff there's there's probably not a lot they they know to do for those. And so there there's, there's that also, but, but let's, let's jump forward a little bit. It's good to see Ty here in the room too. Um, that's talking about cash offers. So if you feel sketch about being a um, wholesaler and you're calling and it, the reason why is because maybe, you know, what, what Andre was saying too, but also, you know, that you, you just don't realize how powerful you are. You know, you can really make some great discount cash offers, but also, you might be thinking, yeah, but I'm not talking to ugly houses all the time because I'm trying to do lease options. I'm trying to do some creative real estate things. I'm working with pretty houses. Okay, well, let's talk about that for a minute. If it feels sketch when you're talking to a pretty house owner, first of all, you wish they would sell that pretty house at 50 cents on the dollar, but you and I both know they're not gonna. Yeah. Okay, they're asking for near or, or full market value. So what is the next strategy? Now we talked about the king strategy of all strategies, right? Is the cash discount. What's if, if I'm talking to a pretty house, uh, especially, but or, or really any house, but especially a pretty house, if I'm talking to one of those and cash offer doesn't fit, what's the next strategy that I wish, wish, wish as an investor, wholesaler person, I wish, wish, wish that this strategy would work. Is there, is there a next but creative strategy that I can use on pretty houses that fits very tightly underneath the king strategy. This would be like maybe the queen strategy. Yeah. If you could just take over their debt. Wow. Wow. Yes. Andre nailed it. Subject to, right. Yeah. Subject to, yeah. Subject to. I think it depends on the house for me. Okay. And property. You know, I'm asking myself, is this something that I want to own long term? Because I personally will not wholesale a subject to deal. Um, I'm going to keep those houses. So if I land one, I'm going to mm. be stuck with it for a while. Um, okay. So it could be something that I like and that I feel like I can deal with the tenants in it. Yes. Um, and so uh, and I'm looking at the strategy based on the deal, not so mm -hmm. much going in with, I want to do this on that house. Right. So she brings up a good point. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, uh, with the discount, discount cash offer, unless you're assigning it, if you're, if you're actually getting a private lender, let's say, let's say Andre uh, gets you connected with some money and he's the private lender on that deal and you now own the house. Well, what are you going to do with it? You know? Yeah. So you you have to have a you have to have some sense of exit strategy plan here on these things. But right. the the subject to again taking ownership, getting the deed. So like she makes a valid point here, a very good one that taking on the deed means taking on a certain amount of expenses and responsibilities, and yes. <laughs> you know you're agreeing to make a mortgage payment for somebody. Mm -hmm. Right. So, mm -hmm. but again, kind of the queen strategy, 
right? So, but but like the discount cash offer, a bit tough to pitch on a lot of deals because the house is pretty or it just doesn't fit a discount cash offer. It just doesn't really, they're not as motivated or desperate as they, they're not ready to just walk away from the house, sign it over to me and then let, let me continue making the mortgage payment while that stays in their name. Okay. That they're not motivated enough for that. So uh, subject to and cash discount are the king and queen strategies, but they don't always fit everything. Do they? No. Plus, Plus, you don't. You might not want to own the house. You know, that's what right. what Angel was saying. Yeah, yeah. So, so my, my, in, my, um, go ahead, Ty. No, something just something just hit me. Uh, so, so pretty houses is, is categorized in subject two. Is that right? Is that what you're saying? Most because, subject two houses have a mortgage, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. It just, uh, that just hit me, like. Right in, in between the eyes, yeah. that yeah, that because they're they're in, essentially carrying it, right? And it may need some repairs, but typically they're not the ugly junkers that we're referring to. Yeah, gotcha. They yeah. might be, Justin. They might be. You're right. I mean, that, that's I'm not a hard fast rule. More vacant houses and really crappy looking houses that have mortgages on them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, where I That's look at it, go, well, you know, they only, they owe about $54,000 on it and I could do maybe a subject to, but you know, to get them a little bit more money, but it's better usually for me just to cash them out because it's not worth the headache, um, or the risk in, in doing it subject mm -hmm. to, but I've been very surprised at the number of houses that I look at that, mm -hmm junkers and they have mortgages on them i'm like who looked at this house before they gave them that right money? funny huh it is funny well that's a great point um glad i'm glad we're having this discussion let's talk about the subject too when it comes to if i'm a new person i have no money i'm pretty well broke but i'm, I'm maintaining I'm, I'm treading water somehow <laughs> but but i'm not I'm not wealthy. I have no real extra funds, let's say. And maybe my credit's not great. Could I take over a house subject to? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So again, a qualified buyer, <laughs> right? So it, it's possible. You don't have to have cash or credit to take over a house subject to. Let me, let me ask you, what's in the subject to deal? This is a little deeper, but what is the, what is the king agreement or piece of paperwork that you need to do a subject to? Let's say someone in your local market today calls and says, Hey, listen, I got this house over at one, two, three apple cart way. I'm leaving. I'm going to, I'm going to lock the door, put the key under the mat. Um, on Friday, if you want this house, you can have it. I'm, I'm gone. Okay. Uh, Friday next week. Uh, well, let's get together and do some paperwork real quick before you leave. What is the king piece of paperwork that you need to do a subject to? That's not really my area of expertise, Justin. I have to lean on you for that. Uh, but I can tell you that if you were going to come to me with that property to get a loan at some point in the future, I'd want to see the chain of title clear mm -hmm. where, you, where, where you actually took possession of it uh, oh. subject to whatever the mortgage was. So I'd want to yeah. see some type of document there, but, uh, but you know, I would need your input on how to get there. Yeah. Isn't that on the HUD one? Um, that's a good question. It, and a lot of places it, it might be on some forms that, that, that are readily available online. Um, uh, it, it's possible. Um, as far as what I would do, here's how I see it. I would take a simple purchase and sale agreement. In purchase mm -hmm. price, I would put the loan balance of Bank of America loan, mortgage, XGV, 75R14, whatever. You know, because you don't really know exactly. I'd have the guy sign it. And then I would have him sign a quick claim deed with a notary. Bye-bye, mm. Mr. Seller. You can get in the car and leave. 
we're, I'll, I'll, I'll call you if there's anything that we need, but uh, I think we've got enough to get going. Now you take that to the title guy that does subject to. Right. Say, hey, listen, I've got an agreement here. It's signed, and I've got the, the quick claim deed with the notary and everything. So can you help me put the paperwork together right here for where we live? Okay. That's that's to me how simple that is. But um, what do you guys think? What's yeah, I thoughts? think that, that I think that that would give you enough to be able to get through. If you came to a private money guy like me, that would be enough for me to be able to get through my underwriting. Uh, so that I could, you know, either put a loan on to whoever you want to sell it to, or if you're in, get yourself in a position to be ready to get some financing where we can go. I, yeah, I think that that is clean and simple. And the reason I really like that, Justin, is because if you got a guy who's on his back and on the ground, mm -hmm. he's got to realize that what he's doing is he's knocking on a thousand doors, mm -hmm. trying to find somebody with a problem that he can solve and he's probably going to get maybe one or two out of a thousand but you know he, he can either sit at home and uh and watch tv and play video games all day or he can knock on a thousand doors it's one of the two that's true that's true uh, subject to discount cash offer they don't always fit but you are definitely if you got that sketch feeling when you're talking to a homeowner you're definitely qualified to do both of those strategies Mm -hmm. uh, no matter what your credit or cash situation may be. Um, yeah. Um, the However, first thing I would do though, if I got, I'm just, go ahead, Angel. I was going to say, I would recommend that if you are that uh, person that you were, where you don't have the cash, you don't have any reserves, you don't, you're in debt over your head mm -hmm. and you're going to try to do a subject to yeah. that. You go to somebody yeah. like Andre who has yeah. some money and say, Will you partner with me on this mm. and you be my reserves? Because yeah. it's very important to have reserves in those situations so you don't yeah. sink that person along with yourself if you're sinking. Um, but it gives you the opportunity to buy that house. Yeah. And I would greatly give up, you know, part of a deal to make a deal if I don't want to not do it just because I don't have the cash and I also don't want to put other people at risk. So yes. I would be a partner and say, you have the cash. Can you put up the reserves for this deal so that I can make sure that I don't put this seller in harm's way? Uh, uh, another great point. And, and it also leads to another thought that I, that I think is valid where if you're doing a subject to deal, if you're new, you know, you get that quick claim deed signed, you've got that purchase and sale agreement. Maybe give yourself a few days inspection period. Mm -hmm. And then go and talk to somebody locally um, that can do a title check mm -hmm. and make sure that it's kind of a good deal still. Like it's not, he's not hiding some debt on the property that you're unaware of um, things like that. And, and maybe talk to a private money guy like Andre and see what you could possibly do with a quit claim deed and a purchase and sale agreement where you've taken this house over and, mm -hmm then you've still got your, you're, you're doing your inspection, so to speak. So you don't have to file just because he signed the quit claim deed and had it notarized. Doesn't mean you have to take it down to the courthouse and record it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So just, just a thought, just a thought. Uh, so yeah, again, kind of, uh, kind of everybody could do it, but you know, got to all of these things, you got to use your brain some. Right. So when I get on the phone with a homeowner, I'm thinking discount cash offer. No, this homeowner does not want a discount cash offer. Would this homeowner be interested in, in letting me take the house over subject to their existing mortgage? What if they're not? Okay, we've talked about if they are, but what if they're not? What do I default to next? Personally, I default to would this person consider leasing the property to me for 24 or 36 months? and allowing me to purchase it at this purchase price that they've named, that's too much for a discount cash offer. And it's not subject to, would they allow me to take out to, to make that payment or that rent payment for 24 to 36 months and purchase that property at that asking price during that time frame? Would they allow me to sign, assign this over to a, a great tenant buyer that would love to buy that house from them? 
is this something that they would be open to? So you see, this is a lot more palatable to the homeowner than, hey, would you let me take over the house, keep the mortgage in your name? I'm going to make the payment for you. Okay. <laughs> All right. And it's also a way to get the homeowner more money than a discount cash offer. So a lease option solves a few problems here, which is why, mm -hmm. which is why I'm the lease options. Yeah. I'm the big fan. Of yeah. I love options. that sandwich strategy. Uh, first time you, you know, I, I've heard it before, but you know, I never really paid a lot of attention to it until I started talking to you, Justin. And I, I really love that strategy. So now with that, is there two separate agreements, one for a lease and one for an option? Well, buy. yeah, that's a good question. Um, the the problem with lease options is is you don't take the deed. So right. you've had you've had um, discount cash offer where the deed's going to switch, You're subject to the deed's going to switch. But but if I'm defaulting the lease options now, I'm putting the the homeowner more in the driver's seat. I'm still going to be able mm -hmm. to make money. I'm creating an opportunity for myself. I'm going to use what I use now is a combo agreement. It's a lease with an option to purchase inside. I do mine separate, but I've, I've only sold on a lease option. I've not bought. Well, the reason okay. I ask is the right. reason I ask is because if you come to me to get financing on a property with a lease and it's got an option included in it, I won't be able to finance that for you because I have to have a lease that does not have any encumbrances on the title. And that option does what you want, Justin, it gives you, you know, rights to the property yes but for me as a lender it creates a problem because now i've got a chain of title issue because you came in before me saying that you actually have uh, rights to this property with this option so i would need a lease without an option and then if you guys wanted to do an option separately that was not recorded uh and that was not a part of the chain of title uh, then I could still finance that house for the er for the current owner. So that's why I asked you yeah. know, how you would do it. And I guess it goes back to what Angel was saying. Do you are you doing this so that you can immediately finance it? Or are you doing it so that you can just hold it for 24 months and see? Mm -hmm. But you know those nuances and strategy. That's where that's where the money's made. Okay, great point. And I'm glad we're talking about this. It's pretty deep here. When, I, when I'm doing these, most of the time I'm assigning them over. So I'm using a combo agreement with a lease with an option to purchase inside of it. So when I assign this over, nine times out of 10, both parties, the seller and the tenant buyer, want to create a new rental agreement that's just between those two parties, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which makes the option agreement something I sold on one day long ago, and it's a historical transaction that not recorded anywhere so mm -hmm. that's that's how that works so it kind to kind of answer your question there but if i'm going to sandwich a deal okay where i'm going to stay in the middle then i'm going to do what angel's talking about and i want to have a separate agreement i want to have the lease and then i want to have a separate option mm -hmm. and um, that's best for me if i'm sandwiching it if it's if it's separate okay now those are just little nuances like like Andre was saying, but um, definitely uh, I can, if let's just talk about it. Can I do a lease option on a house? It's $500,000 house. I don't really have that kind of money, but let's say I, I don't have much credit either. Can I do a lease option with the objective of sandwiching it or assigning it, even though I don't really qualify for it personally? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But again, it's, it comes down to one, the owner's set of set of uh, urgency around letting somebody with bad credit come in there and lease his property and go out and market it. And, and he's the owner's got to believe that, you know, you're going to do a better job at finding someone to actually pay that monthly note and pay that lease amount than them going out and getting a realtor. So that means that they right. probably had some problems with realtors. Yes. A lot of failed listings, a lot of failed listings out there. I got an, uh, I'll show this right here real quick on my screen, but this is from where I live in a little suburb. 
285 new properties added, failed listings. And look, a lot of these are kind of pretty. Mm-hmm. I mean. <laughs> oh, definitely. I mean, they're not, they're, you know, they're not glorious mansions, but they're kind of pretty. And Absolutely, yeah. They've yeah. had bad experiences on the MLS. Don't That's you right. think that more, do you see more realtors trying to list those? Because when I first started, like in 2017, um, you know, realtors were like, no way, I'm not, I'm not listening to that. They didn't want to have anything to do with any of those properties um, if they were damaged in any way. And now I'm seeing more realtors taking those on and listing them because I see some pretty bad dumps on the MLS. Yeah. Yes. So these people, these field listings are going to get beat up all, all the time by, you know, that's what I hear at least. Mm -hmm. that they get calls every day from realtors. So, you know, yeah, a lot of them are going to relist. That's just facts. And then a lot of them are you know, probably going to try to go for sale by owner. You know? mm -hmm. A few might try to go for rent by owner. Um, some of them might just come off the market completely and just sit there, you know, all sad and mad about it. Right, right, right. So, again a great opportunity for a guy that's getting started because all he has to do is reach out and say hey would you consider leasing the property for 24 or 36 months and letting us purchase it at you know fair market value during that time frame that's a pretty decent offer if you think about it if i'm pretty if i'm pretty serious about needing to sell i mean yeah especially if i need payment relief or right. if I've really, really badly got to go and I can't afford a payment here and a payment there, wherever it is I've got to be, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe this is a great opportunity talking to this Justin guy. You know, I've done okay. a, I've done I've done hundreds of these over my career of a long time. Okay. It's mm -hmm. a long time. When I say I've done hundreds and people be like, Oh wow. But dude, I've been doing this for since my first deal I did in two thousand five been almost 20 years <laughs> okay. right, right. so it's like you know it takes a long time but yeah I, i've done uh I've, all of all of those i've never had a, a credit check done on me ever mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. i've had them require that i put money down right and i've and i've collected that money from a tenant buyer and gave them part of that to <laughs> to satisfy that right so again i'm a qualified buyer whether it's an ugly house or a pretty house. And that's kind of what I really just, the point I'm really trying to get at today is, and while we wrap up here, is there's really no reason to feel sketch about it. If you start seeing yourself as you talk to homeowners out there as wholesalers and investors, if you start seeing yourself as someone who can legitimately, literally pull off these strategies for either ugly or pretty houses, it's just not that complicated. They will fit. Most homeowners will fit that that are willing to talk to you will fit in one of those three categories, either the cash discount, the the subject to or or a lease option. If they're not, then they're probably not the right stuff. They need right. to go back on the MLS. And if you're focused on solving the problem that they have, finding out what that is mm. and solving it. Bingo. It's not about you. It's not about you know, me going in and what I want and what I need. Um, it's really about them and what their problem is and whether I can solve it. And if you truly can solve their problem, um, at least in some way, you know, cause it's not always the best. Some, some right. problems you're not, you can't solve them all the way, but you can try to at least help alleviate some of that pain and stress. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you're a problem solver exactly. and that, that is, that's absolutely problem. key. They're happy to give up the house if you solve their problem. Yes. I think that's absolutely key. Well, you I got to say, I love Ty's uh, responses every time he just shot the cannon off. <laughs> He's, still... <laughs> that's that's pretty good. Great. He's great. That's pretty good. Yeah. I, <laughs> I love, love that. Yeah. It reminds me of, uh, you know, remember Van Vanilla Ice? Um, yeah. You have a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Yo, yep. yo, right. yo, yeah, yeah exactly. Right. 
And, and you know, the art here, if I can, if I can say the art of being the wholesaler investor is learning how to ask the questions to the homeowner to solicit the answers that will determine for you which type of offer fits best. And should I make a discount cash offer for this guy or should I make mm -hmm. a, a subject to offer or should I make a lease option offer or maybe something else? But, but usually one of those three big ones will fit, but yeah, that's the art. I, I, of it. I, I like that. And, and, but that, that requires, you know, uh, repetition. So you got to get a lot of that, you know, you got to get a lot of at bats and a lot of repetition. In. Yeah. And, you know, you know, when I first uh, tied into you, Justin, you were selling these cards. You remember those cards you used to have? Flash cards. Yeah, I got them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you still got? Okay. Yeah. yeah. They, and they had, you know, if this, then that type of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, I, that's, that's what will help a newbie, you know, kind of get through the motion of you know hey Absolutely. which question do i ask how do i ask it you know all that good stuff yeah for sure because yeah, you gotta you gotta kind of you know like i said you gotta do a thousand doors you gotta knock on a thousand doors to get a deal uh sure. especially initially because nobody's gonna bring you a deal you got to you know yeah. ask about it yeah yeah mm -hmm. yes it's good to have coaches a coach or a mentor or somebody that will answer some questions for you or you know maybe hop on a call or you know, I, I've had a, you know, locally, usually locally, there's somebody there locally that, that is cool enough that if you called them up and said, hey, listen, I'm really out here trying to hit um, and find a deal. When I find a deal, if it's something that the guy's real serious about and it looks like a discount, like cash offer or a subject to, would you go as far as get in the car and ride with me over there or meet me over there and take a look at it and help me get it done? Because I, I would love to... I would love to help make you money and get a great education and, and all of that. I, there's guys out there that'll do that. Oh, they are yeah. in, in every market, everywhere. Yeah. You know, a guy who's, you know, been in the business, like you said, for 15, 20 years, got a couple of uh, dollars stacked away. And, you know, he just, you know, doesn't yeah. want to knock on the door every day. I, I say guys, but it could be angel. Well, well yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. I was going to say, raise your hand, farmer. Justin. Yeah. <laughs> Angel will definitely meet you over there, help you get the deal tied up. <laughs> I will. I will. Yes, and speaking uh, of that, she's got a great wealth builders group that she started over on Facebook. There's a link to contact that down in the description. You should check it out. Very nice. Because yeah. they talk about things like subject to and uh, stuff like that. I think to, from time to time, building wealth inside mental and, and spiritual and then outside too with uh, you know, owning properties, building portfolios, stuff like that. Exciting topics. Yes. Um, yep, absolutely. And, and I did also put in the chat, the benefits house. I love this benefits house. Um, sorry, my dogs won't stop barking. Um, <laughs> but as we were them. talking about, you know, best strategies and, and whatnot, I always think about the benefits house. Um, mm. You know, and what are my benefits? Also, what are the benefits for, you know, the seller? Yeah. Um, right. And it all fits in here. So, you know, when you're doing a lease lease option, you're securing use of the property, but then you're also, then you're assigning the use of that property to a tenant buyer. Um, yes. Somebody gets the tax benefits. The seller still does. Yes. So, yes. So, so when you think think about this and you think about it with from this benefit structure, there are some benefits that that seller still gets. Oh yes. Which makes it an easier pitch for me. See? Right. Yeah. Which is why I lead in with that because so I lead in knowing if that's a pretty house, especially I lead in with the lease option because I figure that's probably my best shot at getting a yes or getting a nod at least like, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, right. I'm pretty lazy like that, but, uh, we should wrap up. We've been going 45 minutes. I love talking to you guys and I love talking about real estate too. It's great to see Angel. It's good to see Andre again this week. It's it's good to see Ty. Thanks for being here too, man. Anything that you guys want to share before we wrap up? Thanks for being here so much. I really, I really am uh, honored. Man, that you guys Justin, are here. You, you, you do a great job with it. I just wanted to tell everybody, you know, first day of spring just passed. So 
Hope oh. you guys get out, enjoy a little yeah. bit of it. You know, if the it's pollen great. doesn't get to you too bad, you know. Right. So it's uh, you know, yeah. I was I was reading something a couple of weeks ago. They say if you're lucky, you get about seventy. And what that means is, is that you get 70, you know, springs, oh, yeah. you get 70 yeah. summers, you get, so when wow. these, when these times of life come around, you know, you got to get out and enjoy it a little bit, you know, it's all mm-hmm. about, we exactly. got to make money and we got to make a living and, you know, but at the same time, you only right. get 70 of them. So go ahead and enjoy at least a right. day of it. Yeah. Well, exactly. When was the last time you looked up and saw the sun or looked up and saw stars or maybe like, when was the last time you felt the grass in between your toes? Right. actually actually earth contact you know when, when was the last time you did that or maybe got down and dug a garden with your uh on your hands and knees you know right uh, and it's uh, not just a hippie thing you know right if you get out there and you you do that your brain works a little differently and you 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 figure out a different way to make money oh yeah and you learn a lot about life out there yeah. growing growing plants yeah it's, yeah. It's yeah so it's not a hippie thing you know it's a, it's a, you, you, it's still business <laughs> but you know you got to you got to recharge yourself every once in a while uh, great it. advice andre love you guys you guys have a blessed rest of your week and weekend and then i'll see you again next we'll week you. okay looking forward to it bye bye everybody